So it's been a week since my last video and since our ultrasound, almost a week, it'll have been a week tomorrow. Um, and I wanted to, before our ultrasound tomorrow and the very likely DNC, I wanted to film an update on how we've been going um, since, you know, last Wednesday's appointment. It's been a tough week. It's been a very emotional few weeks, as you guys know, um, with the beta hell and um, not knowing what to make of the numbers and, you know, getting mixed messages from people and, you know, trying to stay hopeful for this baby and the pregnancy while the medical staff were not. Um, it looks like in this case that they were right, but still a little bit of hope um, goes a long way. And I, I honestly, I thank you all for giving me that hope because I was not being given it by the medical professionals um, and I needed it. And so thanks to all of you, we had that. So i um, so grateful for that. Basically, the last few days I've spent... I've been at home majority of the time, obviously not going to work, um, spent my days in my pyjamas, um, not very motivated to do anything. I don't know, we've been feeling quite numb. I've cried every day, but not a whole lot. Um, it's usually been hitting me at night time. Um, I just all of a sudden break down, um, Obviously it's it's tricky because we've got this ultrasound tomorrow and I honestly don't have much hope in um in what it's going to show everything it's in my gut I I I know it's not an okay pregnancy um and so my mind is telling me that you know, to prepare myself for the DNC and that's what's going to happen. But my heart is still obviously praying for a miracle. Um, but I guess the ultrasound tomorrow will give us a definite answer um, as to what's going on. Um, so um, a detail I forgot to mention in my last video after our ultrasound, that body of fluid most likely blood um, that was in my uterus next to the gestational sac um, has disappeared. So I have had no bleeding whatsoever. Um, it just reabsorbed. I don't know. It's gone. So um, it ended up being nothing to worry about. Uh, there's not much more to report. Um, but I did want to just touch base to let you know that we're coping okay we're just taking each day as it comes um obviously it's not easy um i guess the last few weeks have given us time to prepare ourselves for this outcome tomorrow will be a very hard day you know another dnc is I'm not looking forward to it. I did ask my doctor if I could have um, antibiotics this time. For those of you who are new to my channel, you probably don't know that the reason why we're doing IVF or we've done IVF um, was due to an infection I got from my first miscarriage from the DNC um, in October 2014 when I had the, my first miscarriage um, and then the DNC. I got... A minor infection which I was asymptomatic for I had no symptoms um, and I had no idea that I did get the infection until a year later when I got a laparoscopy done and we found that my tubes had become damaged um, so previous to that miscarriage in 2014 I conceived very easily and very quickly I had no issues um, with anything Tim and I were fine our only issue is my tubes um so my left is completely blocked and my right one is partially blocked and obviously 
it is still possible for us to get pregnant because we've conceived three times this year. Um, after my laparoscopy in November last year, we were told that it wasn't very likely for us to conceive naturally, which is why we did IVF. Turns out it is possible. Um, I mean, our doctor at the time said, you know, it's he can't look us in the eye and say it'll never happen naturally because it is still partially open, but the likelihood is not very high. But obviously, um, it's higher than he thought. So that's the reason why I got an infection from the DNC. My clinic don't give antibiotics after a DNC, which is actually quite common, I've come to realise. Um, not everyone will be given a antibiotics after a DNC. It's a relatively straightforward procedure and the risks of infection are very low. Um, my thing is, if there's a risk, why not eliminate the risk? I've since had a DNC after that one that gave me the infection in February, which I didn't have antibiotics for and since then I've wondered what was I thinking risking my one partially good tube to become damaged again um, is not worth it to me so I did ask him if I could have antibiotics he said yes so I feel that's one less thing I have to worry about um, I'm now we're now worrying about why all of these miscarriages keep happening um, I think our next thing to test will be karyotype testing. Um, I think that's what it's called, where they test the chromosomes, Tim's chromosomes, my chromosomes, um, and see if there's anything wrong there, which I'm praying there's not. I'm praying this is just a numbers game and we've just had bad luck with our miscarriages, um, because... I don't know what our options would be. I mean, I don't. I need to research that if there is an issue with our chromosomes, whether it is possible to even make healthy embryos. Um, obviously, IVF would be our option in that scenario, and we'd have to do PGD or PGS um, embryo screening, which is obviously quite expensive, but. Um, both IVF cycles that we've had, we haven't had very high numbers of embryos, so, and I also know that the PGS can, um, damage embryos, perfectly good embryos as well. So there's a lot to think about, there's a lot to worry about, but we're trying not to worry about the things that we don't need to worry about just yet, um, trying to take each day as it comes and not get too ahead of ourselves. We've still got one frozen embryo from our last IVF cycle that we did in... July? No, June. That we did in June. Um, obviously, I'm, they, my clinic don't do genetic tests, don't do PGS, um, don't test the embryos. So it's scary the thought of potentially transferring another abnormal embryo and this happening all over again. But um, I think what we'll do is get the testing done on Tim and I on our chromosomes before doing that embryo transfer. Um, I don't know. I've been tested, as I said in my previous video, for natural killer cells, um, for blood clotting, for numerous things. Um, my AMH level is 43, I think it is, so it's... Um, in normal range. I don't know if there's an issue with my egg quality. I'm not sure how that's determined. Um, Tim's sperm is fine. Everything's fine in that department. All the tests that we've gotten done, which are quite a few, have come back normal. So my inkling from the beginning, even starting IVF, before we started our first round of IVF in April, I was... At that stage, we'd had two missed miscarriages and one chemical pregnancy. And so my concern was, and I did mention this, that I was worried we couldn't create normal embryos and that there was an issue. I mean, I guess it's, it's hard to know because so many people have multiple miscarriages and go on to have healthy children. 
A part of me feels like it would have been nice to get all the testing done before even starting an IVF cycle and I know that's probably not what they do, um, especially if you've only just had, well, three miscarriages, including the chemical is quite a bit in my opinion. Um, but I know there's women who have many more. But I think before doing something as expensive as an IVF, it would be nice to know that you've had all of the tests done that could potentially cause your cycle not to be successful, such as something that could give you poor quality embryos or abnormal embryos, just so you know you've covered all the bases. I don't know. It's tricky because if they did that with everyone, I guess with a history of miscarriage, they should do it just so... I don't know. I'm not making any sense. I've appreciated all of your lovely comments um, and encouraging words here and over on Instagram. It's meant so much. Um, I've been just trying to stay busy. I've had a good opportunity to reply back to a lot of you. Um, this morning there was some big drama with Cooper. I've never heard him scream so much. There was a stray cat or a neighbour's cat, I haven't seen the cat before, right at our back door, and Cooper was screaming at the top of his lungs. Oh my god, I'm surprised the windows didn't break the pitch of his voice. It was great. It's the awful sound. We're also so blessed to have such beautiful friends. We've got um, friends who live just down the road and they've been cooking us multiple dinners each week and dropping off banana bread. If you're watching, thank you so much. You're the most beautiful friends anyone could ever ask for and we're so, so lucky. Honestly, it just warms you, the people's kindness and thoughtfulness. Um, and it makes these tough days that little bit easier. Um, so thank you. We'll bring you along with us tomorrow. I don't know how much I'm able to film, but um, we'll try and document the day as best we can. I don't know what's ahead. I don't know what our next steps will be. Obviously, it's very discouraging when we just keep having miscarriages and it keeps happening. We're just um, hoping we get some answers which will then, you know, we'll be able to do things to prevent this from happening again and prevent any more losses because it's exhausting. Um, I've had no cramping, no bleeding, no signs of miscarriage, which is usual for me um, when I've had my miscarriages in the past. Um... My first miscarriage, I was nine weeks, four days, um, but the baby was measuring eight weeks, four days, had no signs of miscarriage whatsoever. Going in tomorrow, we're preparing ourselves for the most likely scenario um, while my heart, a tiny piece of my heart is, or a big piece of my heart is praying for a miracle, but I unfortunately don't believe that a miracle will happen. Um, it's just my gut feeling. Um, unfortunately. Your prayers have meant the world to us. Um, I've heard from a lot of you who are also currently miscarrying or have, um, you know, told me about your multiple losses and your stories and I really appreciate hearing from you all. Um, 
and obviously feel for you guys as well for what you've been through and what you're currently going through it's not easy it can be a very isolating experience and um it doesn't have to be and it shouldn't be because it's so common um it shouldn't be so taboo in regards to my clinic a lot of you said change clinics change doctors um we definitely won't be doing another IVF cycle at that clinic. I can't stand the nurses. One of them I like, but the majority of them, I just, they made this whole process so much more stressful and heartbreaking than it needed to be. Obviously it's heartbreaking, but they just made it so much more difficult um, for me. And they just made me even more emotional than I already was and it wasn't helpful whatsoever um I don't want to have anything to do with them anymore if I don't have to so if IVF does end up having to be our option due to chromosomal issues between Tim and I then we'll be going to another clinic um my doctor on the other hand he is a great doctor he's one of the best um he has been I may not have made it very clear you know amongst my frustration with the whole progesterone scenario but he has been very empathetic and um, compassionate throughout these last two years of our journey um he's been our doctor the whole way through and he is one of the best um so i think we will stick with him regardless of whether we you know once we do become pregnant we will he will be our ob but um as for IVF and dealing with those nurses, no, nah, not going to happen. Anyways, I'll leave it here. Um, but I just wanted to thank you so much again for all of your support and love. We cannot thank you enough. Um, it means, has meant so much to us. We'll be sure to keep you posted on what's going on tomorrow and um, in the next few weeks. And speak to you soon. Love and baby dust you all. Bye. Going through memory.